I think not that the 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 seller had uh, sell remorse, but he actually admitted to the broker, "I'm I'm dumb. I should have done it, you know, a year ago when I just finished the renovations." And he understood that he left a lot of money on the table. Yeah, ah, that's that's. You know what though? I bet he made a lot of money still. Uh, with, yeah, with the sale yeah. of the deal, so everybody, <laughs> everybody wins. Um, I I hadn't heard of that size of property. How many? How hundred unit? Yes. Okay. I hadn't heard of that size of property have that type of, of story before. So, um, but it's amazing that, you know, the, we're dealing with large numbers, uh, right. you know, it's a hundred unit property. So, you know, it's a multi million dollar property, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it, it just takes a handful of those. If we come across a handful of those to make a huge financial difference to our investors and then also, you know, our team. So uh, thank you uh, for sharing that. And I think the, the a component to that is being very knowledgeable about the market and the submarket, because if you don't know the market and the submarket, like the back of your hand, then you're not going to see that there's some dramatic rent increases that can be achieved without doing any work on the in interior of the units. Uh, because you don't know the comps and you don't, you don't really know that that's possible. And someone who does come across that deal, even though it's a pocket listing, I, it's likely that you all weren't the only ones that were seeing this pocket listing. Probably a handful of people mm -hmm. were, or groups were seeing the pocket listing. So it's right. likely that other groups are going to pick up on that. So it it's just shows the importance of you all knowing that market and the submarket and being able to see that opportunity and quickly jumping on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, without knowing the market, like the back of your hand and the immediate area surrounding the investment, um, you can't really know if 100 or $150 are reasonable or maybe you can get more and what's the level of renovation that is needed. So we knew, you know, we drove the property, we drove other properties nearby. We knew how much they're charging and we knew that their interiors are are either at the same level or not as nice and they were charging more. So we knew we have some room to push um, the unit. So that was, um, you know, one kind of, that was kind of one or two things that I've learned from this um, experience. So get rid of the fixed mindset and understand the story behind the investment. That's really gonna help you um, understand if there's a real value um, in, in the investment. Um, and then the third point that I wanted to talk about is from the capital raising uh, standpoint. So when we raised money for the deal, I thought the, the value is so clear here. It's going to be very easy to raise money. Um, and it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it's, it's never the, the easiest thing. And I would say always raise more money than you think you need. So if you need to raise a million dollars, aim to raise 1.3 or 1.2. Um, at least 20 to 25 percent more because people will surprise you. Investors that are ecstatic about an investment, even those who sign a PPM, sometimes say, "Listen, I've something happened. I can move forward." And you don't want to get to the point where where you're about to close the deal um, in a, a week and you don't have all the equity already lined up. So always plan to um, raise more than you need. Because always expect surprises. That's all I yeah. can say. I, I, I have two comments to that. I agree. Uh, happens with our deals too. Um, one, when just to clarify, when you say always raise more than you need, um, you're telling the individuals after you have what you need that you are on reserve and should something right. unexpected take place. So you're not actually um, bringing the backups in immediately. Oh, of course. You're just saying, hey, you're on reserve and should something change with the current investor? Um, so right. that's one thing just to, to clarify. Then two, I actually have a list uh, that we keep of decommitments. So investors who commit, but then later decommit uh, after they said they were going to commit and totally get it that you know, things come up. Um, you know, uh, it's crazy. I mean, it, I mean, I've, we've, we've done a decent amount of deals. So I, I've heard a lot of different circumstances for why they committed and they're decommitting. But I have a rule where if someone does that three times, then I'm going to remove them from my list. So, you know, first time, hey, totally get it. Second time, 
I understand, you know, perhaps some circumstance took place twice. Um, but then if they commit and then decommit a third time, then they're just not the right investor for us. Uh, so we actually have a running total of uh, our spreadsheet internally of people who have committed and then decommitted. 